I've traveled all around the world and I've looked for all the ancient cultures and tried to figure out the past for my whole life. And it wasn't until recently that I realized I don't have to go to Egypt to look at ancient buildings. They're right here in Brisbane and in Sydney and in Adelaide and in San Francisco and in you know, everywhere. All of these old buildings are not our culture. They're a previous culture that they existed there and we simply inherited these buildings. Look at the sewer system in San Francisco. That's something that I'd like to point out to people. Now, San Francisco is a great example of this because, you know, we were told that there was the gold rush and they went out there and they built those shanty towns. They went out there and claimed their land and all that. Have a look at the sewer system beneath San Francisco. This incredible multi-level, multi-layer sewer system built out of millions upon millions upon millions of bricks, you know, archways, and it's incredibly multi-level sewer system. Who, who built that? What did they just do that? The settlers, when they came out on their gold rush, they thought they'd better go down and dig this incredible sewer system for the city that was going to come. No, it was already there. Now, a lot of those old buildings were already there. You look at San Francisco around about, you know, 50 to 30 years after the gold rush. You look at the panorama of San Francisco and the buildings that were apparently built there in 30 years. There's no way. There's no way that was built in 30 years by a population of around about 500,000, we're told, lived there at the time, around about 1880. The whole city looks like it would hold millions of people. And, and how did those 500,000 people build all of that in 30 years with that incredibly complex design? And all like European style, what we're told is Roman Greco style, we're told it is. Same here in Australia, there's, there's stuff here like Queen Victoria Markets in Sydney built in 1820, which is the most incredible looking um, architecture. But we're told by the same token that Australia was, was populated by convicts. They had some convict ships out here. But these convicts, they were just amazing stonemasons. And they, they came out here and they built a quarry, of course. It would have been the first thing they did. And then they built a brick factory with the bricks they got from the quarry so they could make bricks, so they could build all this incredible European style architecture, as you do when you're colonizing a country killing all the Aboriginal people. You know, nothing makes sense. None of our history makes sense at all when you look at the, the timeline we're given and the stories that we're given. All you've got to do is step back and think about it and you realise that none of this is true and this culture, all of this stuff was here and we inherited it all. Whatever happened, something happened, we're calling a mud flood. So much culture is buried below ground in Seattle, in San Francisco, across Europe, here in Australia. There's at least 18 to 20 feet of stuff below ground. A lot of the buildings that you see actually have lower levels and they've got windows and doors and rooms and all sorts of stuff underground that we don't know is there. And they just simply put in a new doorway, paved a new road and didn't tell anybody it happened. They repopulated the world with children and they taught them whatever history they wanted. That's what happened about 200 years ago. And uh, this is all starting to come out now. And I think that's another reason why they're really pushing to try to cull the population now before this information comes out. Because so many people are waking up to the fact that we're living in a complete and utter lie. So yeah, it's an important time, brother. And I don't think any of the stuff that they're doing now, they actually intended to do now. So they've had to bring it forward and move it forward because they're, they're running scared. And they look terrified too, these politicians. When you see them being interviewed on TV, they know that the people know they're lying. And they're getting out there and they're trying to still play their parts. But the, you look at the body language of them, they look terrified, they look scared to death that people are actually waking up. And the faster they push this, the more they're waking people up. So it's, it's all backfiring for them, I think, Rob.